Alrighty, hello, and welcome to this build guide for... I'm just calling it the Cold Marksman at this point because I just don't have much creativity. That's all I've got. It uses cold, it uses freeze, it's cool. It looks cool. Um, and cool and colder. Maybe I should call it the Cool Marksman. Yeah, I already came, just came up with that off the fly. Just amazing. Right in the middle of my video, the Cool Marksman. Maybe we'll use that in the, uh, the title. Anyway, um... This has been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. It looks cool. I will. I shall show you. I'm probably going to put some video in, so you might get this covered up. But yeah, all kinds of blue all over the place. Bluish white stuff. Lots of damage going all over the place. There's two different effects from uniques going at the same time. Well, not in this particular case because I'm not hitting a boss, but when I am. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's visually very pleasing. It is a good build. It is not super overpowered, so it doesn't have a whole lot of worries about patches. It does have some downsides, though, which we will cover here in a minute, but, um, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this build turned out. Okay, let's go ahead and go through those pros and cons so you can get a feel for whether or not this build is right for you. So, to start with, it has good CC. It is built around the concept of freezing enemies and... For the most part, it does that very well. Both of its primary damage skills can freeze, um, and they tend to do it quite a bit, especially if enemies don't have like an absolute ton of health. So you won't get hit very often, as long as you're consistently attacking. It also has good AoE. The Hail of Arrows uh, attack has a very wide AoE. It can be cast often, as long as you're regenerating your mana. Um, so you will hit a lot of enemies all at once. It has very good movement, which is not unusual for Rogue. In fact, it'd be unusual if it didn't have good movement. That still applies here. You can definitely get over 100% movement uh, for large periods of time. Uh, it has very good utility. Again, very normal for Rogue. We're using both Smoke Bomb and we're using um, uh, Decoy to great effect to make sure we are not getting hit too much and also buffing ourselves. And yeah, it's always very good to have those. And like I mentioned, it looks really cool. Cool, huh? I'm gonna have to. It's gonna have to be the cool marksman. That's, it, we're just stuck with it now. So uh, yeah, uh, cons though. There are a good number of cons in this build, more than usual for me. So I do want to point those out just in case any of these are um, are a definite no for whoever's watching. Uh, it has a high cost to make. Um, it uses four uniques, which is definitely more than I've ever used before. One of these is build enabling. You actually absolutely have to have it. One of these is build defining. You can run without it, but I don't recommend it. And the other two are build enhancing. You you can definitely run without them, but it's nicer with them. So if you want to get the full power of it, you're going to use all four uniques. And the first two, you pretty much almost necessarily have to have one. You definitely have to have. So you can't use this build until you have at least the first one. And I'd suggest the, the, the two. Uh, Troaka's Teeth is the one you definitely have to have. Usanui Sphere is the one you really should have. Um, it only does decent DPS. It's not like a super high DPS build. You can start stacking Hail of Arrows along with Puncture to do pretty good single target damage. And Hail of Arrows does, does pretty good AoE. Uh, you'll never feel like you're just super lacking in it. You'll kill bosses relatively quickly. Like it's, You're never super lacking, but you're never going to be like uh, crazy, crazy fast. Hey, welcome, Lizard and friends. How's everybody doing? I'm in the middle of a, uh, a YouTube guide here, so I unfortunately will be pseudo ignoring you for a bit. Uh, I apologize. It's not because I don't love you. I definitely do. Um, but yeah, got to make the recording. So uh, only these DPS, not crazy DPS. Uh, freeze the big CC. It falls off at the high end. This is not really arena viable because the um, base freeze rate is just not high enough. You be freezing consistently in high arena. Um, it might struggle a bit in empowered too. I didn't run it in empowered yet, but I have run it at level 90 timelines and it's it's still pretty good there. Um, but I would not run this as arena build. This is definitely more of a mono level build. It does very well there. It's quick there. It clears quickly and the CC keeps you from dying too much. Um, but if you want to run in arena, you probably want to look at a different uh, variation of Hail of Arrows. Um, and it's also not tanky, which also hurts it for arena. I have not built this for tankiness at all. Um, it's quite squishy, but the CC makes it so that d decoy and uh, freeze, you're not going to get hit much at all. Silver Shroud goes off. You really don't die very often if you're moving around a lot. Um, I don't know. Have I died? I probably died at some point. Yeah, I've died at some point in this build, but not not often. Though, maybe once or twice. So it's not going to get you killed like a lot, but you can't sit there and take hits. So you have to bear that in mind. Um, I think that's it for the cons. Yeah. Oh, one other thing. Uh, mana 
it, it's mana intensive. You actually have to rotate between Hail of Arrows and Puncture. Puncture regens, and then Hail of Arrows is one of your is is like your big AOE damage. Puncture also does damage though, so it's not like Puncture is just sitting there just generating mana. But you're gonna spend a lot of mana with Hail of Arrows, and then you have to regen with Puncture. So if you don't like a generator spender system, you probably won't enjoy this build. If none of that stuff is a turnoff for you, and you like the pros, then you'll probably like this build. Okay. Let's move on to pros and cons. Uh, what's the skill level? I would say this is an experience build. You definitely can't make this a new player. You just won't, you're not gonna have the uniques to make it. Uh, the only thing that's like skill intensive on this are, do you drop your decoy? Uh, and uh, do you generate spend properly? And are you positioning well? And that's pretty much outside of the generator spender. That's that's rogue in a nutshell. So um, as long as you go with the generator spender, the rotation should be fine for you. So as long as you have the uniques, I don't think you'll have much problem playing the build. You just have to get those, and so that's why it's not really beginner friendly. As far as future patch considerations go, uh, there's only one thing I would be a little concerned with, and that's true of any build that is using the more damage in the passive tree. It just takes one build to be able to abuse more damage in the passive tree, which is the multiplier effect to ruin it kind of for every build. I don't think there's anything out there that really does that yet. That's like just super broken because of it. But I've always will keep an eye on it because of that. But everything else in the build is very much within reasonable amounts of performance. So I don't think this build is in any serious danger of being nerfed anytime soon. Okay. Now that we've covered all the basics of what the build is, how do you make the build? Let's start with the skills and specializations. So we're going to use shift as our movement ability and i always go and take shadow recuperation swift recovery and three and three of momentum as soon as i can because that movement speed buff is just incredibly tasty uh always start with that and then from there we're going to go and take four in jade quiver and five in venom tipped arrows which increases our damage over time the majority of our damage this build is damage over time although not all of it so this is a pretty good buff to our damage when we have it going and we're also going to take shadow slip for the involved while shifting and three in elusive or dodge rating per dexterity, which gives a sizable amount of dodge um, for a small period of time after you shift, which can definitely save you if your invulnerability was slightly too quick and you're trying to avoid a telegraphed attack, and then you have a decent chance of dodging with elusive. All right, the generator, quote unquote, is puncture, although it's not all it does, it definitely does its own damage. And we are building this in a particular way and for a particular reason. And uh, what we're doing is we are taking advantage of Trawaka's Teeth, which is going to convert all bleed and poison chance to Frostbite. Now, Frostbite is a, a dot, a stacking dot, but that's not all it does. It also decreases the enemy's uh, ability to resist being frozen. And so the more stacks we have on, the more likely we are to freeze the enemy. So from here, what we're doing is we're really pushing into both the speed of the attack as well as bleed and poison chance to put as many stacks of frostbite as we can on the enemy. So it's going to give you a decent little dot on the enemy, but also it's just going to make them a lot easier to freeze. Uh, the next thing up, oops, excuse me, is Hail of Arrows. This is where the majority of our damage is coming from. And we have converted to cold and we have taken the freeze right so that we can also uh, freeze from two sources, which definitely improves our chance of freezing enemies. Uh, we had to take the slow chance to get there. We've also taken uh, some more modifiers, which you know, more damage modifiers are always great. So we've come up here and taken steady, and then four of five in nowhere to hide, which increases the the multiplier on this particular one as the um, as the uh, hail of uh, arrows duration is longer or longer it's up. So um, at the top end, in this particular case, it'll be 80, an 80% 80 more damage multiplier. We've taken 100% increased area, and we've taken 16% more damage here, and 30% more damage here with a, a slightly smaller radius. This gives us a pretty good damage. It's definitely not the most Hail of Arrows damage you've ever seen. It's not even close. There's some Hail of Arrows damage uh, builds that can do a ton, but we are sacrificing some of that damage in order to get the freeze as well and the cold conversion. Um, also, I'll also note, note that I've got uh, 22 points in here, so I do have a tier 5 um, plus Hail of Arrows, and I'll cover that when we get to the gearing section. As far as Smoke Bomb goes, we're doing a whole bunch of things in Smoke Bomb. we got a whole bunch of uh, benefits from here. 
Uh, we got a little bit of duration. We've got um, this note here, which is really just to get down to hidden blows, so we can get a uh, bleed chance on our puncture, 200%, which is, again, converted over to frostbite when it comes to puncture. We've taken one point shadow hunter just to get the blind with bow attacks. We don't really care about the base crit. Uh, three points in generosity for a starting area that's larger. Then we've got uh, some defensive buffs. We've got one point enfeeblement to get down to Moonlight Bomb, two, two stacks of Silver Shroud. That's a guaranteed dodge. And then 200 ward when you do dodge. And then we've got one in Shroud and Darkness and four in Rapid Concealment, which gives us Dusk Shroud frequency um, or Dusk Shroud um, stacks as we are standing in Smoke Bomb. So it's going to, what's it, this 100%. Uh, so every half second, we're going to get 5% Glancing Blow and 50 dodge rating. Um, and yeah, that's all for Smoke Bomb. And then we've got Decoy, which of course is our amazingly good CC, um, where we can just tell the enemies to go wherever we want them to, and they'll be like, okay, sure. Uh, so we've got uh, three in Efficient Construction, three in Sonic Detonation. This is almost exclusively for the Frailty Stacks, which causes the enemies to do less damage. Uh, we don't care too much about Armor Shred since the majority of our damage doesn't benefit from Armor Shred since damage over time does not get affected by armor. Uh, four or five in Embedded Spikes and one in Backup Body, so we have two charges. And then five or five in Duration and Cooldown. And then four or four in Dodge Rating with Active Decoy, so a nice 200 Dodge Rating just to have a Decoy up, just in case someone does happen to hit us uh, while a Decoy's up. That is all of the Active Skills. Let us move on to the passives. So we'll start with the base class. We have eight of eight in Swift Assassin for that attack speed. The fizz damage is nice, but uh, it's mostly for the attack speed. We have, uh, let's start actually down here. We have one of five in Guile to get to the five of five in Evasion. Damage taken while moving is, I use it on every single rogue build I, I use. The 25% dodge ring is nice too. Like you just, you're moving around, you take, a quarter of the damage you'd otherwise take. That's awesome. I have right now two of five in agility for haste on hit chance and increased damage for 1% increased move speed. I will probably invest more into this if I were to push it further. I'm only level 77, by the way. Um, and then four of four in the sapping strikes as soon as you can because this is your mana generator. You need this. You have to have this to regain your ma uh, mana on puncture. From there, I've gone up here and into here. Now, do not do this initially. You cannot go and take these three until you get up here and take this, and here's why. So we're taking Lethal Cadence and Disembowel, which really, the, this is just giving us that bleed. Um, that's the primary purpose of that, to get uh, two stacks of bleed, which is two stacks of Frostbite. You can not take this and be fine, by the way. You can, like, get down here and take Dodge and Parry. But what we really want to do is we're just taking this to get up here. Is we need Coated Blades for a 40% more damage multiplier on Hail of Arrows. That's a lot more damage, but it's going to cost 20 mana more, which is substantive, very substantive for Rogue. So why we wait to take this is because you can increase the amount of mana gain that you have um, from your Puncture by taking a Mana Warp. If you take this too early, you probably will have significant mana problems as it is. This is very mana hungry to begin with. You might be able to get away with a couple of stacks early, but uh, basically what you should do is do not take more of this than you feel like you can comfortably take and um, still regen your, your mana up to be able to consistently use Hail of Arrows on cooldown. I hope that makes sense. If you can't use Hail of Arrows on cooldown by swapping between Hail of Arrows and Puncture, then you probably have too much mana that you're, that you're, uh, you're spending and not generating enough. So... If you get to that point where you're like, I just can't maintain Hail of Arrows, draw back a little bit on Coated Blades. Um, you can also draw back on um, on Mana Warp itself if it's getting crazy because that actually increases the mana cost as well. Generally, it should more than even out to where you've got more mana, but there is a balancing act here. My my just general recommendation is don't mess with uh, more damage until you get up to Mana Wrap and you can put a couple of points into it. Then once you've done that, then you're good to go. Okay, moving on from the base class to marksman so we've got eight of eight in draining arrows this is great for the bow attack speed and that health gain you combine that with uh the health gain here that's 56 health per hit uh you're going to be hitting a lot with puncture this is going to be your primary generation you don't really need a whole lot more outside of it 
You can definitely add on a bit of leech, um, some regen, but that's going to cover a large portion of what you need. Elemental arrows, we're going to take one point in here. Now you might think, well, you're doing a cold build. Why would you only take one point in elemental arrows? Well, that's pretty easy. There's only fire and lightning damage in elemental arrows for some reason. It's not a true elemental arrows. It's a, like two thirds elemental arrows, but storm Fletcher is increased bow elemental damage. So we can take that. And uh, and that will benefit us. So we take one in Elemental Arrows and all eight in Storm Fletcher to get the damage there. And pretty much ignore the rest of Elemental Arrows. We've also got Prolonged Demise. Decreased damage over time taken. Increased damage over time of wielding a bow. Most of our damage is damage over time, so that's great. And then we have to get up to the, the top end. So we've got one in Concentration, two in Meditation, and one in Reflection. I would probably start to fill these out a little bit if I kept going. But for now, they're good. Uh, six of six in arrow storm. This is really good for generation. It's like it's kind of annoying because it's only up 30% of the time But that 30% you can fill up your mana bar really really quickly so it can kind of um, It can kind of get you back to to balanced on your mana uh, Spender generator. Uh, I've got four of ten currently in covering fire I'm currently working on getting that higher definitely pick up at least one in this don't go any higher until you've got one Because that gives you that guaranteed dodge um uh when you proc arrow storm which is really great uh then we've got six of six and sniper's gambit for that bow fizz damage um they use that there's a conversion in hail of arrows so that's really really good so this actually converts all of your fizz to gold so that is awesome and uh then we have ethereal arrows this is great because it's uh, going to increase uh our damage by 500 percent of our bow mana cost well, we've got uh, 87 mana cost, so 87 times 5 is the percentage that's actually increasing. So that's a lot of increased damage. And then, of course, we we're back to mana warp where we've got the mana gain um, and the bow mana cost. And then definitely want this one, Master Archer, 40% increased Hail of Arrows area. So, like I said, if uh, I were to continue leveling this past uh, what 77 it is currently, I would be pushing into Covering Fire for sure after that um these are some good notes like this one's really good for especially for like clear speed because you can you can increase your movement speed um i like this one a lot too i definitely like agility there's definitely some room to continue to push this uh you can put three more in here if you want to get five uh frostbite stacks just like immediately every third attack that's that's pretty strong so a lot of ways to go from here, but once you've got to this point, your build is pretty much well, you know, figured out. You're pretty much where you need to be to get everything going. Let's move on to what's really the most important part, probably, which is the gearing, because you actually can't run this build without some of the, the uniques that are that are in here. And so you definitely need to make sure you you have them before you try to. All right, let's start with um, the two stars of the show. Number one A star is Troaka's Teeth. This is a random drop, right? A random world drop, yeah. Um, starts at level four, uh, 44. And what it does for us is it converts over bleed and poison chance to frostbite chance whenever we use puncture. And puncture being our generator is used an awful lot. So it turns that into a cold skill. It also gives us freeze rate multi and bow cold damage and chance to apply frostbite on bow hit. Um, and increased cold damage, and it gives Puncture its own freeze rate. So this is a must-have because otherwise Puncture can't freeze. It has no cold support whatsoever. Um, and getting freeze rate multi on a quiver is really nice for this build as well. This is just like a pretty much perfect unique for the build type we're going for. The next star, and the more complex one, is Usanui's Sphere. I've been trying to get this into a build for a long time. And it's very difficult to do so in a way that is um, efficient because the way it works. So what it gives you is cold and lightning damage as a base, which is great. Cold and lightning resistance, mana. But where it really gets crazy is you get the 100% chance to cast water orb when you hit a boss or rare enemy. Water orbs do damage. Um, and they actually have a freeze rate on too. At 300% effectiveness. But that's not all that they do. They also, for you, increase your cold and lightning damage for each water orb you have cast in the past 12 seconds. Well, there's a three second cooldown on this. And so under normal circumstances, you could only get up four, to the, four of these, up to four of these. So it's um, three is like 120% increased, in our case, cold damage. But if you have exactly 
as much attunement as you have intelligence, it triples. So what's that? 120 times 4 is 480% increased cold damage, which is huge when you're fighting rares and bosses. This is a good way to get your single target up significantly, and that's why the single target damage is pretty decent on this build. So that's an important aspect of this. And baseline in Rogue, Rogue is great because you don't need attunement or intelligence. Like you almost never use attunement or intelligence. So you should, unless you've got like some random gear, uh, start at zero with your attunement and your intelligence, which is equal. So it, it works just like that. Uh, there is a, a bit of a catch though, which is that we want to use Reign of Winter as well. And Reign of Winter comes with, four, in this case, 14 attunement. It rolls 10 to 15. So why do we want to use this? Because it's a lot of damage. Bow Cold, Spell Cold, which um, affects its own icicles as well as these water orbs. It makes their, their uh, damage significantly higher. It actually adds quite a bit of damage to the build. Uh, cold Pen, it's great. And, uh, and then that chance to cast I Icicle is a, is a pretty big damage buff as well. Um, but we have to take the attunement hit to do so, which means we have to find the equivalent amount of intelligence somewhere else on the builds. This is where it gets kind of kind of weird. Um, this is one of the weirdest bi uh, builds to actually build for, because as soon as you pick up Reign of Winter, you now have to change your gear around to account for it. If you run, you can run this without Reign of Winter, by the way. You can, it actually works without Reign of Winter. It's just like a nice big damage bonus to have it. So what I've done is I've got three intelligence on my boots and 11 intelligence on my gloves. And that's pretty much what my gloves do here. Unfortunately, um, they're not doing a whole lot else, but it's enough of a buff that it was worth it for me. Long term, I would definitely try to replace these, but you have to maintain whatever amount of attunement you get on your bow, on your the, uh, on your gear for intelligence, or else you will go down to one orb with the Usanui Sphere, and you don't want to do that. You definitely want to stay at three. I know that's really weird and kind of kind of convoluted, but that's what we're doing. We want three orbs, so we need to maintain attunement intelligence at the same level. And we've taken Reign of Winter, which gives us attunement, so now we have to get equivalent amount of intelligence. The last unique is Snowblind. Uh, this is the least necessary, but that's the only way to get that kind of freeze rate multi on a helmet. So um this is almost perfect freeze rate multi if you have a low freeze rate multi it probably isn't worth it but if you get a good snow blind um that can definitely be beneficial you can also get the chill and blind which are nice um but yeah this one this one you can definitely work without but you'll get more consistent freezes if you have it okay the rest of the gear is all pretty much centered around getting your resistances and getting what health you can because you don't have a lot of space because this is four uniques which is a crazy amount of uniques on a build um, so we've got Necronic Resistance, Physical Resistance here, Intelligence, of course, to, to cap that out, and, and always we're putting movement speed on our, on our boots. Um, always putting movement speed on our rings, although you can go Elemental if you don't mind going a little bit slower. Fire, Poison here, Freeze Rate Multi, get Freeze Rate Multi wherever you can get it. Freeze Rate Multi on this one as well, Elemental Damage, Elemental Resistance, and Crit Avoidance wherever you can get it. So really, uh, you want Resistances, Health, Crit Avoidance as your defenses here. Uh, we got health and health here, elemental damage over time and cold damage, and then the plus two to hail of arrows here is huge. Definitely try to get your tier five hail of arrows because there's so many more multipliers in hail of arrows that the damage actually is significant. And we also have a plus one to shift, which isn't necessarily required. I think you can get away with that for sure. The necronic and fizz are amazing on um, on a chest, but you could also replace those with health and get a lot of health. So, however, it can work out for you. If you get a lot of blessings that are resistances, you can definitely start to put health into your body armor instead. And then the freeze uh, amulet with freeze rate multiplier added on. And I've got void resistance and health on here. As far as the idols go, increased duration with hail of arrows is your best shot every time. Um, damage while wielding a bow is great. Uh, increased bow damage is great, and if you can't get Hail of Arrows, increased health is definitely great as well. And then on your, by the way, you're always going to want large idols. And then if, on your Ornate, you can put Bow Elemental Damage and Dodge Rate. Rating of Hit recently is nice as well. Uh, that covers all of the gear. Blessings. Let's talk about Blessings just real quick. Blessings are pretty much uh, around trying to get your resistances. What is this here? Uh, freeze Rate Multi from Ending the Storm. Definitely want if you can get it. Definitely, definitely want that. Uh, crit avoidance if you can get it from Reign of Dragons definitely want that too and then if you can get Shred Cold resistance on hit from uh, the Age of Winter that is the only way you're going to get Cold Shred it's a huge benefit if you can get it on the Empowered it's even more but 
remember, you can't get that to the level 90 timeline, so you're going to go without Shred for a long time. But if you can get it, it's a big, big benefit. So your resistances on your Blessings, um, Crit Avoidance, Freeze, and Shred Cold. That's pretty much covers just about every Blessing that you could possibly want on those. All right. That is the equipment, the gearing. The rotation is pretty simple overall. So what you're going to do, you're going you're gonna to start with Hail of Arrows. Definitely get that going. And then you're going to regen and also do deal damage with Puncture. Hit Hail of Arrows on cooldown if you can. You build up a whole bunch of, uh, of overlapping stacks. You've got duration. You've got a good duration on this. So they're going to actually overlap quite a bit. So the damage looks small, but it, there's so much going on here. There's actually quite a bit of damage going on to the enemy. Uh, if you pop Smoke Bomb, you get a bunch of defensive buffs. Plus, you're going to do more bleed and you're going to blind them. And to make sure the enemies stay off of you, do decoy. And then they, they won't they won't hit you. So that's, I mean, sh and shift to move. Shift to move, that's it. Pretty easy rotation. Hail of Arrows, regen your mana with Puncture. Hail of Arrows, regen your mana with Puncture. Use your, def use your, uh, your buffs and your CC as needed. All right. Uh, I think that covers everything that we need to talk about. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the build. If you like cold builds, this is one of the few options, if not the only option. There's a couple of other variations you could do with uh, Taraka's T, but this is one of the few options you can do as a rogue. This is this is one of one of cold rogues' um, viable choices. So I hope you enjoy the build. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to be a part of the build making process or just hang out and chat, I do stream on Twitch five to six days a week. Would love to have you. And we also have a Discord where um, we had often talk about Ellie and a bunch of other things. We tend to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Would love to have you there as well. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great time in last epoch, and I'll see you all again real soon.